Hey Dataflow fans, today I'm going to introduce you to the parse transformation. Why would you use the parse transformation? Well, if you are writing a data flow and you find that the data that you're working with has essentially formatted data embedded inside of a single column, then you'll want to use the parse transformation. So first, let me show you where you'll find it when you are constructing your data flow. And you click the plus sign, you see the toolbar for the transformations. You will see parse here under schema modifier because it's going to take a column or several columns inside of your data. And let's say that data has an embedded JSON structure inside of a single string column, or it has um, essentially a set of data that is delimited, is text limited, including even having headers in it. You'll find that sometimes quite often in data, especially in data lakes, that that happens. And you need to actually parse it out in a formatted way. So we're give, going to give you four matters that you can use with the parse transformation to so go ahead and ask Data Factory to parse it for you. So let me show you how I have my example set up, and this might make it a little bit clearer. First, I want to show you the source data. So let me slide over here to my SQL Server and show you what I have for my data. I'm going to use the, um, the products table, or actually the product description table from the OLTP sample adventure works uh, database. And I have the product description ID, a description, well, let's not worry about the real good or the date, but I have at the end, I've added a new column that's called JSON value. So this is what I'm referring to that you're going to find sometimes in your data. And it doesn't have to be lake data. Of course, this is an example of it, the data being embedded inside of a column as string data inside of a database table. In fact, if you look over here, my JSON underscore value is an N var charts. It's not a JSON value, even though it, it's not a JSON column, even though it has JSON string values inside of it. So I need to have data factory parse that for me. I also have an example here of a delimited column within the string um, column of description. All the other descriptions are just plain old um, written out uh, typed out text. However, this description is um, pipe delimited. So I'm going to want to parse that as well. I could use split on this, the split function and derived column, but this would give me a way to handle it directly within the parser in the data flow. All right, so let's go back to the uh, data flow. Let's take a look at how you would work with that data. So let's look at my flow from the left to right. In my source, I'm pointing to that uh, source table, um, which is my AdventureWorks product description. And then you'll see that the projection matches the column types that you saw there. These are the Spark converted types from the SQL Server types, uh, including the string for the JSON value and the string for the description. Now I'm going to just filter out that one single row that had both of the uh, pipe delimited data in the description as well as the JSON value so that we can just keep this simple for a demo. We're not looking at all the other um, hundreds or thousands of rows. Now I add onto here a parse. So I go my plus sign and click parse. And I chose to call my parse transformation in this case as parse JSON because I'm going to first parse that JSON out. So I select my format as JSON. When you do that, you get a set of settings that you would find in the source transformation for JSON, including how the document is formed within that single column. So I'm not having any arrays or this is not document per line. It's just that single one document that was embedded inside of that column that you saw from my demo data. So I'm going to say single document. And then just as you would in a derived column or aggregate um, transformation inside of Dataflow today, you then choose what you want to call that column. I could overwrite that JSON value column, but I want to leave it as it is. I want to leave it natively there and add a new column because I only want to pull out two values. So let's take a look at what the data looks like again. And this time I'll look at it from the data flow itself. And over in here, you'll, oops, over in here, you will see that I have a, and actually so way over here on the right-hand side. So instead of looking at it from the sample data, I guess I can hover and that might be an easier way to show you. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see the columns of, uh, let's see, we're going to take the level and the registration. I only want those properties out of the embedded documents within JSON value string, just those two properties. So what we do then is in the parse, back to here, I'm going to say that I want to pull the JSON out of this column called JSON value. And then I'm going to form the output column type that I want. And all I wanted was level and registration. Level is a string and registration is a long. So I identify those here by picking long, by picking string for the expression type. So now I've identified what I want the data to look like, where it's coming from, and what column to put it into, a new column in this case. Let's go over to data preview and let's see what we get.
So here is the JSON value right here. This is what we looked at earlier that we were pulling out the level. I can't move off there because it's a pop-up. Level and the registration. So level was a string. So there it is, it's free. And there is the value for the registration. So this goes into that new column that I called level and registration. So now I will have in my um, inspect the data coming out, I will now have a new column called level and registration. It's a complex column type with those two properties. So now I actually have a real complex value for what was a string representation of JSON in my incoming data. That makes it uh, nice and clean, and now I can work with that data as if it were an actual JSON structure. Now let's parse out the, uh, the, the limited text part of that data. And uh, this was from the description field, so I put it under expression. I'm going to again uh, make a new column instead of overwriting description. So I could always just pick from here and say overwrite description if I wish to. But I'm going to create a new column called new description or new DESC because I like to not type so much. And then the format of the output is going to be, I, I know that there are three different descriptions being set in there. If this were to be run against data that didn't have three, it would just put null for the other two or the other um, values that are that are parsed that do not match the same number of descriptions and same number of pipes in there. And so all I do is I define it here as description one, script two, and description three. If I had headers um, in that's embedded in that same column, I could also do the same thing I did with the JSON. That's not where I want to go. But when I select a delimited text, I could say first row's header, just like I can in the source transformation. And if the common delimiter happens to be something other than pipe, just pick it from the drop down here, just like you would set on your source transformation. But again, this is meant for data formats that are embedded inside of a data column. So what does that look like? So that takes the chrome, steel, and plastic, and will give me three new properties, chrome, steel, and plastic, all part of that column that I called as new description. So now when I sync the data, I will get the two properties that I'm interested in here, and I will get the split out version of the limited text in that single uh, column description. Okay, so that is the parse transformation in Dataflows. Thanks for watching.